be something new. And the first thing we needed to do was make sure that we, we sorted things out with Tony. And as it turned out, Craig Kelly was his manager, personal friend of all of us, yep. and we were able to pull it together nicely. So we wanted to make sure that Tony was the first Collingwood bloke not to go out of the joint in a pine box yeah. for a long, long time. So yep. for me, particularly as a young president, not to be coming in as look like I was a gunslinger, I wanted to make sure that those things were done properly. From that moment on, there were probably only uh, uh, three people that uh, I thought of at the time who could do it. Uh, the irony, of course, is that you and I, the year before, had sat down and had a cup of coffee and talked about you going to Brisbane. Mm. Uh, you would have been one of the people I would have come and had a, a chat to to come back after having a, a time off. And uh, I've actually said that uh, uh, to people in the know, so I'm not just making yeah. it up here. And the other, the other three uh, were Mick Malthouse. Kevin Sheedy and at that stage Dennis Pagan. Now, mm. Dennis had just won a premiership, so he was out of business. Sheeds was about to win a premiership, wasn't leaving Essendon. And as it turned out, uh, Mick's family, his uh, mother in law and his uh, Nanette side of the family, had uh, some illness in the family and it was time to come home mm. and it was he wanted to come back here. So it worked out nicely for us. The reason being was that I believe that Collingwood needed to have somebody who knew how to win. And uh, again, uh, not being obsequious to you, but I saw the absolute impact that you had at Collingwood as the coach, that your winning mm. culture and nature changed the whole dynamic of the place. And for me, I needed to probably buy three years to be able to do off the field what I thought the club could do yep. to reshape the place and not have to worry about how the coach was going. Yeah. So with Mick Moulders, I didn't have to worry about a Clinton game coach. plan, mm. didn't have to worry about the training, didn't have to worry about anything else. He had that under control. People believed in his plan and were able to uh, really get about it. And, and as luck would have it, the first year we won five games, then we lost the next 17, finished 15th, finished 14th, finished, no, sorry, 15th, 9th, and then uh, into a grand final. So mm. it gave us a bit of time. And it seems a long time ago now, but 04 05 was the, was the drop down 14th, 15th. Yeah. Um, and the, the, the pressure that's on then about the coach and the future. And yeah, well, I think by that stage, we had uh, we, we obviously uh, played really well in 2002 with a, a battling group, and in 2003 we were exposed mm. in the grand final by your side. And Mick uh, took the, the the belief at that stage that we needed to turn it over and start again. Now we had a horror run for two years with our better players at the same time that we got rid of a lot of the mid-ranking players, so we were exposed. Mm. Uh, we went to the to the 15th position. Now, as it turned out, we were able to pick up Thomas and Pendlebury, mm. which was a, a good thing. But at that stage, we actually knew where we were. And I suppose that's the thing. In knowing that you've got a steady president, chief executive and coach and a mm. plan, you can get through those those periods. Mm. Uh, and we built the club up financially where we had a bit of a buffer zone in that regard. So the membership didn't drop off. We wouldn't have wanted to have a third year down the bottom. Mm. But by that stage, we started to, uh, to regenerate and come good again. And uh, hopefully that'll manifest itself in the next... Uh, 20 quarters of football. Well, yeah. <laughs> and, of course, you've embarked on the club's second six coaching succession plan. And, yeah. of course, Bob Rosen. Exactly. With myself well, people way back in 1985-86. Well, people forget that. that mm. uh, you know, and I suppose the thing for me, Lee, is that uh, for the last nearly 30 years, I've been at every coach's press conference where they've been sacked and hired. Mm. And I've seen the way that uh, good operators might come to an end and it becomes year zero, and mm. clubs just clean mm. the slate and lose everybody. Mm. Mm. And uh, you might lose a really good fitness bloke, you might lose a good chairman of selectors, you might lose good assistant coaches. You lose all these good people who are in the outside as the new bloke comes in mm. and wipes them clear. And quite often I've seen uh, half the people who should stay go, and half the people who come in shouldn't have been there in the first place. So what we've tried to do is to uh, let bucks come in and observe, as well as learn from Mick Malthouse and the team that are there. Mm. For him to focus on 2012 when he takes over, so he'll be you know, have a key role this year in recruiting because really this is his first yeah, draft. Yeah. And at the same time, uh, Mick is there, but not killing the place for for a, a premiership to go out the door because he's got a long term future as well. And you know, one of the great things for me is that Mick Maltas will have a club when he finishes football because a lot of people don't. And uh, you know what he's doing with what he's doing with Nathan, but also his his capacity to uh, finish his coaching career going at 100 miles mm. an hour, and to use the analogy of a relay baton change to hand it to a bloke who'll be 38 at the prime of his coaching life, ready to go, hopefully, that's the plan, it'll all work well. In the perfect world, would yeah. you have liked Bucks to have a couple of years in another club? Uh, I, I've always said to Bucks I wanted him to go outside of football. Yeah. Um, I thought that there was enough turnover and change in our club for, for that to happen. Probably, uh, maybe to go into state, but I've always said to him I, I wanted him to go outside of the football culture to learn. He's a great student, as you know, of mm. the game and had been in the media 
and doing the things at Collingwood, uh, I, I didn't think it was going to be a disadvantage for him because he actually came with a completely different focus on the game than what Mick did anyway. So there was mm, a, mm. a fair bit of uh, challenging between the two and continues to this day. But uh, for me, I thought Bucks needed to get more of a world view on life because he'd lived you know, a narrow football life as much as going out. And uh, he'll spend uh, the summer months uh, overseas this year uh, being ensconced or in, in, embedded rather mm. uh, in a couple of different uh, uh, other top-level sports. <laughs>